Hey, thanks for joining me in the Little Lands today. Uh, today we'll be talking about uh, Tackle and Ruck. Um, decided to bring these two together. Obviously, they're in inherently related uh, to each other. Uh, you'll see pretty quickly that the Tackle area is probably the, the bit uh, that has probably the most complexity around it. Um, rucks are uh, seemingly relatively straightforward once you once you look at law um, compared to compared to tackle. Tackle has a lot of the um, a lot of the precursor to what actually then can go wrong with a ruck. So yeah, what you know referees often focus on is that initial tackle and what's happening. And you also see you might have seen recently communication by World Rugby um, with regards to refereeing at the breakdown and placing the breakdown. Um, so. I'll, we've got that in our resources as well. So we have taken a lot of references from today. Obviously the World Rugby Laws of the Game, we're focusing on all 14 and 15 today. Um, quite a lot of definitions we need to focus on today too. Uh, our law application guidelines, so the most recent set of law application guidelines uh, talk all about the breakdown um, and really focus on uh, those arriving players at, at the breakdown uh, in the tackle and ruck area. Uh, and then we have used a few clarifications in law just to help us out with a, a few things today too. Um, as always, our Bay Opinion Rugby website has lots of links uh, through our laws page, education page, and our intro to refereeing is a great resource as well to get uh, started with the basis of the law. Uh, so a few key definitions, there's quite a few today, we're just going to cover a, a couple just, to, just so that we have a broad understanding so we can refer back to them. Um, so we'll be referring to the attacking, attacking team a couple times, so that's the opposition to the team whose half play is taking place. Um, so I would see the team closest to the opposition goal line. Uh, so beyond or behind or in front of a position. Uh, so both feet, except where the context makes it inappropriate. Um, however, we refer to that as both feet in most aspects of law. Uh, so when we talk about binding, it's between the shoulders and hips and whole, the whole arm from contact from hand to the shoulder. So it's not just hanging on with one hand, and that, that actually becomes quite important, particularly when we are talking about our, uh, our ruck and our uh, entry to the tackle as well. Uh, defending team, opposite of attacking team. So if it's in your half, then you are the defending team, irrespective of whether you've got the ball or not. Uh, forward means to, uh, towards the opposition dead ball line. So that has some bearing as well on when we're talking about uh, entry into a ruck as well. Uh, hindmost, nearest the team's own goal line. That has a large bearing on offside lines and where you can enter from. Uh, holding the ball means being in possession of it with the hand or hands or arm or arms. Uh, so that would uh, particularly come in handy when we're talking about uh, hold, not re re releasing the ball. Uh, so near, when we talk about near, we mean within a metre in rugby. Off your feet means that when you're supporting um, your body weight uh, by, with anything else uh, so other than just your feet on the ground or on players on the ground. Um, we'll actually talk a little bit about that at the very end to ground, the players on the ground uh, and when it comes to supporting your weight. Um, but you consider to be off your feet if you're not just using your feet to support your weight. And on feet is the opposite. So uh, no other part of your body is supporting you other than your feet. So you're just using uh, your feet to support your weight. Uh, and played. So if you're playing the ball, it means that you're intentionally touching it. So we'll use all these definitions at some point throughout the day today. So we'll dive right into it. So tackle. At a tackle, um, there is no other sanctions. If the sanction is going to be applied, all sanctions are a penalty at a tackle. Uh, so just bear that in mind. And I haven't listed that throughout uh, the tackle set because uh, they're all penalties. So a tackle can take place anywhere in the field of play. Uh, the actions of the player involved in the tackle must ensure a fair contest and allow the ball to be available for play immediately. Uh, so the definition of a tackle, uh, that is how we, that is bringing a ball carrier, uh, holding them and bringing them to ground. And that uh, definition of holding, we'll dive into a bit more as well. Uh, tackle player definition, so that is the ball carrier themselves. They have been held and taken to the ground by a tackler or tacklers and a tackler themselves. Uh, so an opposition player who holds the tackle player and goes to ground. A key part about a tackler definition is that they go to ground as well. 
um, with there. If they don't, if a player doesn't go to ground with the tackle player, then they, in, in, in law, aren't a tackler. Uh, they're just a tackler assist. However, now, uh, given recent changes in the last couple of years, um, that really hasn't, oh, probably the last sort of four years or say, since the most significant recent round of law variations, uh, the difference between a tackler and a, and, and a tackler assist doesn't mean a heck of a lot different now uh, in law, but we'll talk about some of the differences that it does have. So the how and who of a tackle, don't forget guys, if you do have any questions, um, just be sure to pop them in the chat and we can make sure we cover them off either at the end or they're covered off during, uh, during the presentation. So the how and who of a tackle. Uh, so ball carrier, again, um, brought to ground, including, and being brought to ground means either on a knee or both your knees, and or sitting or lying. Um, and that's either directly on the ground or on top of another player who's on the ground. So a player who is already on the ground is considered to be part of the ground, uh, they're out of play. So if the ball carrier is either kneeling, sitting or lying on them as well, then they're considered to be gone, gone to ground. And they have to be held by the tackler until they've met those two conditions above. Um, if they're not held all the way down to down to the ground or down to another on top of another player, then they're not considered to be tackled, uh, in which case a tackle hasn't occurred and none of the what I'm about to go through applies. Uh, so the players in the tackle, you've got um, three types of players. Uh, you've got either the tackle player, the tackler, or other players. Uh, other players can be a number of things. So they, they could hold the ball carrier and not go to ground, which is how I um, described it before. We often refer to them as tackle assists. Uh, they're right to contest possession in a tackle, uh, often called a jackler, if they're a first arriver. Uh, and, or there might be a player who's already on the ground in the, in the area as well. So the responsibilities of the tackler. So the tackler must immediately do the following things. Uh, so first of all, they must release the ball carrier and the ball. Um, they have to move up and get away. Uh, sorry, move up, move away or get up, uh, so long as they're out of the way. And they have to allow the tackle player to release the ball and move away from it as well. They can't do it, uh, intentionally perform an action that pins the tackle player there uh, or prevents them from uh, getting away from the ball. Uh, so the tackler, it's all good for them to contest position, but they have to be on their feet. They have to have shown that clear release, you know, meet all the above. Uh, and then they, but they also have to arrive from the direction of their own goal line. Uh, it used to be that our tacklers could just get up where they were uh, and play the ball. Um, that was changed in law about um, three or four years ago, uh, about three years ago. Uh, and now we have that tackler having to come from uh, the direction of their goal line as well. And we'll talk a little bit about the, uh, the tackle gate. Um, very shortly. Um, but for now, we'll just have a quick look at these at this clip, and this shows a few examples of tackler responsibilities. Eddie Jones rings it. Changes, and here they go. Again to the great ball. Cruz in support. Big turnover for Marcel Rafi. So here we have tackler's gone to ground got to its feet, it's clear release. He's on his side of the um, of, of the tackle player. And he's remained on his feet. And he's the first man to Samura goes to our forward. He was on his feet, he made a turnover. Turnover there oh, for feet. Japan. Test try number 23. And deal here. Uh, this man wasn't a tackler, he remained on his feet, however, there was a clear release, he was first man over the ball, uh, no ruck form yet, so he's able to get his hands on there and take oh, the ball. Okay. It's a game, it's a brilliant turnover on the, on the ground. Tarsalele, dummy there from PC, over the halfway line. Over that one there is Peter Manning. Here, here we have another tackle assist. Um, Sure. Okay. So the tackle has gone to ground uh, with the tackle player. Yeah, yeah, Manny. Getting over the now the now the tackler is performing his responsibilities. He doesn't he doesn't need to fulfil his duties. He doesn't need to completely release the player 
um, and roll away and get up before a tackle assist or another arriving player can come and play that ball. So long as the, whatever that tackler is doing has no effect on uh, the on the ball carrier releasing the ball. That's generally the way that it's that it's ruled on. This one, second. So the tacklers having no bearing on that ball being released. There's a green player in a strong position over the ball. In Rugby World Cup. Who has his hands on the ball and it's been clearly held on to by the blue player. So the green player on his feet. Nice game, stay there, stay there. Solid as a rock. So again, there are there's law and then there's I guess material effect of law. Uh, the tackler, even though they have these responsibilities, um, the responsibilities of the tackler, and particularly in that last clip, was a good demonstration of the fact that it had no no effect on what the ball carrier's responsibilities were, which we're going to go into now. And so that'll make a bit more sense in a second. So the tackle player, the ball carrier, uh, so they must immediately pass or push uh, or place, um, so they can pass or push the ball, but not forward. They can place the ball in any direction. Uh, so they can even place it forward uh, or release the ball. Uh, the reason that they can place the ball forward is often uh, obviously because they can, once they're tackled, they can then reach out and place the ball to score a try if they're near the goal line. So that's why that's in law there. A um, couple of examples there on the right hand side just in, in pictures of uh what they can and can't do so they can't keep holding the ball in the bottom there um red player over the ball a tackle player must also get up or move away as well so that's their responsibility too um quite often if players arrive quickly then sometimes they don't have a chance to do that um but they need to ensure that they don't lie on over near the ball to prevent opposition players from getting possession so again this is where that um material effect if they can't actually get up and move away from the ball they need to make sure that they're not doing anything that prevents the opposition from getting it. So, so long as they're not, and the opposition have a fair crack at it, uh, then that's what referees should be considering as well. So there's law, and then there's application of law. It's, uh, which is why the tackle is such a, an important area for referees to practice, but also for everyone to know the law on. Again, um, they, the placing or the playing of the ball should be immediate. So this is where I think Perry, uh, we had a chat about this last week. Um, this is where rolling or crawling uh, comes into effect. So rolling, crawling, bouncing, etc. Uh, again, this is something that's really trying to be stamped out. Uh, this was in the most recent set of uh, the uh, law application guidelines. So there should be there's no time for an extra movement once they've, once they've been tackled. They can't position themselves by rolling forward or crawling forward again to get a, a more of a dangerous position. This is what I mean by that. It's slow and patient build up. Connect to Heveland. So that's not playing full screen, but I'll try and, and now the tapper. It. Tapper puts on the hammer, puts on the gas. Uh, it's, just a, it's just a non release. Gets up and goes, but didn't release the ball. And there's just no way through tackle this bridge wall. So this one, uh, tackle is completed. Unreal. So 14. Ball carrier. So good Tried tackle. Go straight up. Players held. Blue 14. Blue to ground. Tackle complete. By Mayan, who's Blue been 14. But there's no Behind release this, of the just ball. Just needed to release to the whole so ball. Okay. Uh, okay. got up. Here's the example of the rolling or crawling. So red player goes to ground. Tackled. But then rolled. Or shall I replay this? So, so tackle held and gone to ground. So blue 14's over the ball on their feet. And right now they should be able to have a, uh, is when the red player should be releasing the ball. And if they're releasing the ball right now, you would expect that blue 14 would have a good crack at picking it up. However, the action of red holding onto the ball and then rolling again, then takes the blue player out of the game in terms of winning possession. So by that act, that has that's had a real material effect that um by law should be should be a penalty against red for, for not releasing the ball uh, so other players we talked about other players at the breakdown before at the tackle before uh so some of them were players on the ground or arriving players uh so we when we're looking at other players uh they need to remain on their feet and release the ball in the ball carrier so that could be that tackle assist um and when they're playing the ball they need to remain on their feet as well 
So that's, remember, on their feet means not supporting themselves with the ground or other players. So they need to be supporting their weight. And they need to arrive at the tackle from the direction of their own goal line for playing the ball. They can't play the ball or attempt to tackle an opponent while on the ground. So if there's a player on the ground, uh, they are out of the game. And we talked about players on the ground last week. Um, they have no part in the game of rugby. They can't do anything that then has an effect on anyone else. They need to be able to move away from everything or not impact on it so that the players on their feet have opportunities to play the game as they wish. Uh, here's what we refer to by the tackle gate. The tackle gate is an interesting thing. It's it's referred to so often, particularly in law clarifications and law um, in law application guidelines. It's referred to in coaching um, and talked about by referees a lot. However, it's not actually written in law. <laughs> so it's uh, this is this is straight from the World Rugby website as well. Um, just a simple diagram of what of what the tackle gate is. So here we have a little box drawn around the extremities of the players on the ground. So in this case, we have a tackler, uh, red, uh, and a ball carrier, so a tackle player, blue, on the ground. So here we're drawing a box around the, their extremities. So we've got the third, so hindmost point uh, runs through the blue player. Uh, so that is, that's where we draw that line in the box. Uh, the further sidemost point is their head. Uh, on that side. Uh, furthest point on this side is the red player's foot. So that's where that side is. And then down this end, we have that red player's foot as well. Well, this kind of is, which is almost in line with the ball anyway, but uh, is that red player's foot. So any players arriving at that tackle, um, they can only come through one area. Um, and that is, they must, when they come into this area, they must cross the lines, either at the one that runs parallel at the top of the screen or at the bottom of the screen there. The black areas where the, where the, uh, the black arrows are uh, in, in that zone, players can't come and join in from those sides. That's what we mean by joining, uh, joining the tackle or joining the tackle or breakdown uh, from the side, um, that is from an offside position. Uh, this is a very simplified tackle process. It's not a complete process, but it is a basic process that particularly will work with um, young referees. Uh, I'm doing again, um, material effect uh, isn't read into this, but that's, that's often talked about. So a basic process that a referee would go through at a tack at tackle time, so they would, they'd go through the process as a tackler release a ball carrier. Uh, no, but again, we talked about the material effect before, but if they haven't released that ball carrier and it's had an effect, penalty is the, is the option. If they have released them, then yeah, we go straight to play on. Um, is a tackle player pass, place or release the ball? Uh, if they haven't, if something's happened, no penalty. They have, yes, play on. Arriving players, are they on their feet? If they're not, no penalty or yes, play on. Um, for the top two, those are things that you only look at the option of penalties if you can see that something is happening or that the ball's not coming out. If you're following a process, uh, you're trying to determine what, which of these two um, it's, has, has affected that ball from coming out or being made available to our team. The third one really is something that um, is oft, often a safety thing as well. So players particularly coming in and if they're, if they're, particularly if they're diving in and if it's looking dangerous, then you'd always sort of want to move for a penalty just, uh, just from foul play perspective. Uh, however, if they're coming in off their feet, uh, there's no other players around, it's probably, from a referee's perspective, it's probably worth a, a conversation uh, to that team. If it's had no effect on play um, going, going forward. But if it has had an effect, like if it stopped a player from actually playing the ball, then, um, yeah, which we'll actually show in, these ne in this next clip here anyway. So to actually gain position at a tackle, uh, sorry, if you gain position on a tackle, so any player, if you do gain position of the ball, so you must, well, from either team, you've got to play it immediately. Uh, so that's either by you know, moving away or passing or kicking. Um, you must remain on your feet. You can't actually go to ground straight away uh, near the tackle. So if you get near is within a metre, um, unless you've been tackled. So you can't just pick up the ball and then fall straight on the ground. Uh, that's, that's sanctionable as well. Um, you can be tackled, obviously, as long as the tackler does so from the direction of their own goal line. 
Uh, we now have off offsides at the tackle, so they've been in place for the last couple of years. Um, in the wake of the Italy, uh, probably the most high profile game was the Italy England Six Nations game a few years ago, where Italy basically stood behind the um, England, uh, at the, they never formed a ruck and stood behind the uh, the English tackle uh, on the English side of the tackle, which was interesting and didn't allow England really to pass the ball or play the ball backwards. That was fascinating. And out of that came a rushed um, offside, offside at the tackle law. Uh, so offside lines are now created when there's one player on their feet over the ball. They don't need to be two. Uh, just for offside lines, it'd be one one player at least. Um, so that could be a, a player from the team uh, who is in possession of the ball. They get the player over there on the feet. They've got offside lines, and that prevents then that prevents the defending players from going around and behind that tackle area now. So those offside lines, uh, they run parallel to the goal line and the hindmost point of any player in the tackle. Uh, so that was really well demonstrated by that tackle gate illustration we had earlier. Um, it showed those hindmost points of any player in the tackle. And don't forget we've mentioned who could, can be a part of the tackle. So we've got tackle player, tack, uh, tackler, uh, any other players on the ground in the tackle area. Um, they're all part of the tackle. Um, so we look at the, any of those points. Okay. Um, the offside line can't be in goal, so if there's a part of their body in the end goal, then the offside line becomes the goal line itself. Uh, in ending the tackle, so tackle ends when a ruck is formed, uh, and we'll talk about that shortly. Um, player on their feet gains position and then moves away and fulfills their duties there, or passes the ball, or kicks the ball, or if the ball leaves the tackle area, that's usually within a that, so that near space, so within a meter of that. Um, uh, sort of meter circle and around there in, in, in the tackle. So the tackle area, we had that box and once the ball comes out of there. Um, or if the ball's unplayable. Uh, so if something's happened in there and the ball has become unplayable, uh, chances are it's probably could because someone didn't fulfill their duties under law. Uh, however, sometimes that's uh, difficult for a referee to determine as to what it has actually happened and who's at fault. Um, so what happens in that case is um, an unplayable uh, scrum is blind and the team moving forward um, prior to the tackle or prior to that, uh, prior to the tackle happening or prior, just prior to the stoppage, sorry, uh, then get, gets the feed into the scrum. If no team is moving forward, then the attacking team gets the scrum. That's where that definition of an attacking team uh, is important because if you are inside your own half um, and you, even if you're in possession of the ball, and you take it into a tackle. Um, you're kind of going sideways. No team was no team was moving forward. Then and it's by not far unplayable. The opposition is going to get the ball because they're the attacking team. That's uh, one of those facts of life. Doesn't happen often. Normally, most in most cases, the uh, the attacking uh, the the team position was moving forward unless it was a dominant tackle. So in which case, yeah. But again. Um, this only comes to play if the referee can't determine who's at fault for that ball not being available. Ruck. Ruck time. So, uh, now that we've come through our tackle, the purpose of a ruck is to allow players to compete for the ball, which is on the ground. So, balls on the ground, tackles uh, tackles occurred. So, you've got, now got um, players from each team on their feet in physical contact um, and they close around the ball, which is on the ground. So. This, uh, whereas you needed just one player to form those offside lines at a tackle, you now need a player from the other team to be in contact with, a, uh, with, a, with an opposition player over the ball to form a ruck. Uh, rucking, even though uh, it's rarely referred to in law anymore, um, the definition of rucking is to use your feet to try and win possession of the ball. Um, the word legally is important because uh, we have our foul play laws state that you can't. Um, stamp on someone's head or use your feet in an illegal way uh, that's going to cause harm to a player. So you must use your feet safely. So the how and who of a ruck. So the ruck, uh, a ruck can only occur in the field of play again. So it can't, uh, so field of play being um, between the goal lines and the touch lines. So we can't have a ruck in the end goal area. So the ball must be on the ground. 
Uh, and we must, like as mentioned, we must have one or more players from each team on their feet in contact over the ball. Okay. Now players uh, at all stages of a ruck must have their heads and shoulders no lower than their hips. Um, this is a free kick offence. If they don't, it's not a free kick that's, that's awarded very often by referees. Um, I, now, the, again, this was raised again in the recent law application guidelines uh, that um, to focus on having players arriving with their heads and shoulders no lower than their hips. Um, but chances are, if you don't have your head and shoulders, uh, if, you, if you have your heads and shoulders lower than your hips, well, a couple of things are going to happen. One is either you're going to go straight to ground uh, because you're, that's the direction in which you're heading. Uh, or another is that um, you're then going to be off your feet uh, because, again, you're overbalanced and chances are that's where you're going to end up or you're having to use the ground or another player to support yourself because your head and shoulders are so far down. You don't have a good, strong, solid base um, on your feet. So if you're bending, if players are bending their knees and getting a, long, a low, solid base, then they're... Head, even if they, can, they can still get the head and shoulders low, but their hips are lowered as well if they're bending their knees, so in which case they can create a strong, stable base in which to compete for position, which is what, um, which is what should be coached and which is what we encourage as referees as well. So again, this is a free kick that's not often awarded. It usually turns into a penalty uh, if there's an offence that has an effect on play. Um, offside at the ruck. So offside at the ruck is quite simple. Um, I've taken a little bit, so this first section is here is not from the ruck law, it's from the offside law. I've thrown it in here again anyway. So offside player may be penalised. Uh, so any offside player, if they fail to retire uh, without delay or if just waiting behind the offside line puts them in a more advantageous position or if they interfere with play in any way uh, or if they move towards the ball. So if they do any of those things, they, could, they are liable to be penalised. Um, and where those offside lines are at a ruck, um, so again, we have an offside line that runs parallel to the goal line and again through the hindmost point of any ruck participant. Uh, it used to be the hindmost foot, but uh, we do understand here yeah, because there was that sort of perfect analogy of rucks being plat everyone's on their feet and in contests you know, over the ball. In real life, that doesn't happen in rugby. Uh, there's all sorts of dynamic play that happens. So we have players on the ground, we have players on their feet, we have you know, all sorts of players everywhere. So now that all those, even those players that are on the ground are now defined in the, as ruck participants as well, um, it's, we now focus on the hindmost point. Typically it is a foot, but yeah. First arriving player. So this is probably the, uh, the one that uh, has been focused on the most in the, most in, in the recent uh, law application guidelines is the role of the, of the jackler. So a jackler is a player who wins possession of the ball before a ruck forms. Uh, so as, uh, the referees are now under the, um, are being encouraged to reward the player who wins that race for possession. So they're taking, uh, they're trying to take this concept away of surviving the clear out by position players, um, of just getting there, surviving a clear out and then going for the ball. Um, if a player clearly wins a race for possession, they've got there and they've, they've fulfilled all their duties under the tackle and ruck laws. Uh, they've remained on their feet, they're in a strong position and they've got their hands on the ball then we're looking to reward that player and not just wait to see if they survive a clear out, uh, which, is, uh, which is leading to more and more dangerous plays as teams uh, finding different ways to clean players out. Uh, so that, again, strong position. Now I talked a bit about that strong position before. Uh, that's completely supporting their body weight. Um, so again, the, uh, if, if they're standing up quite upright, and leaning all the way down um, with their hands, sorry, with their head and their shoulders below their hips, chances are they're not in a particularly strong position because any little action, or the chances are they're either supporting their weight with a player or on the ball uh, or on the ground. So um, it's not a, yeah, they're not really realistically supporting, just supporting their own weight. Um, so if they get in a strong position to lift um, and they can't, go to ground and reset. So that's where they come in too fast, go over the ball, hands on the ground to support themselves. So they've gone to ground already. And then they're coming, then they're resetting and coming back and then trying to lift the ball. 
um, that's what we're that's what we're looking at there. So they can't go to ground and then reset themselves and then try and lift. Because once they've gone to ground, they are no longer part of it. They need to come back around and, and re-enter the, the the ruck area. So for players joining the ruck, um, oh sorry, I did miss the little clip there, which does show some good examples. And inside the 22, they go again. Billy Boyle. Ireland win Best the penalty. Man in. All right. Good steal. Three on feet. Yeah, quite good in this area, Ireland. But have Did a look. We have tackle complete. For a uh, uh, supporting player for Green has clearly has clearly waited till the tackle's completed. Uh, then they've gone in with their hands. Um, the tackler themselves hasn't affected the ball being released. Um, now the green player is in yeah, a the kind of power that strong position. Needs to be there. Head and shoulders level with their hips. Man's all over it again, Richie. Finally, the penalty. Yeah, and it's that man again. He's been absolutely inspired, Jimmy Richie. Get it on the ball. The downfield right away as well. But look at that there, straight on the ball. Absolutely brilliant. The number seven here has been good tonight. So again, and this is a this is a good one to look at from this angle. So seven blue. So they're on their feet, and they've already got their hand on the ball prior to the prior to the contact from the Japanese player. Straight on the ball, and it's only after the Japanese player has then so they're they're still in contact with the still still with their hands on the ball trying to lift it away. Still with their hands on the ball trying to lift it away, and it's only after they tend to clear out from the Japanese player that they've oh, been um, fallen sideways and lost their feet, but they've had their hands on the ball. Good they were the ones that contested positions again, first and had right to the ball. Getting over the gain line and quick ball for a scrum half to use. McLean once more. It'll switch with Burford in the middle. Well tackled by Anari. And France having to realign and just hold the defensive shape there to get the penalty. Hold on. Not releasing on the ground. Six blue on her feet. It's a, a decent touch just inside the England half, but here we have a look at it again. Tackle complete. And you can see six blue over the ball. Perfect. Strong position. Heads, heads and shoulders and uh, level with hips. Knees bent, supporting their own weight. Hands on the ball, and then it was only after. Um, so it's happened in a split second, but then she's then she's been brought to ground by the white player, Hola. but she had rights to the ball. Um, first. So it's about rewarding that. that player who has the rise first and has That's his rights. Work of Patea, he's a threat, he's creative. We'll see the turnover eventually here. This was Michael Hooper got in and stole it. It's a great steal. Tackle yeah. in there from Van Flip. Ducking down there is New Year. Good turnover. Oh, oh what a turnover as well. Lava. Oh, so I think um, probably got the point here he was... of uh, first arriving player looking to reward that player who wins that race for possession. Joining the ruck. So uh, the arriving player um, must be on their feet, as we've said, uh, joined from behind their off sideline. Um, now they have to join alongside, but not in front of their, of the highmost player. So, tip, so they're going to have, um, if a ruck's already formed, they're going to have a player there who should be on their feet from their own team. So with that thinking, uh, they can join if they join alongside. There's only one player there. That means they may make some contact with an opposition player. But realistically, their first contact should not be with an opposition player if a ruck's already formed. Um, if for any players, any players coming and joining a ruck, because if they've already got a teammate, they need to bind alongside. Uh, so they must bind onto a teammate or an opposition player. Um, so again, the bind must proceed or be simultaneous with any other part of the body. So they can't. So what this is a big part of the, the recent law application guideline is that to trying to minimise players just barreling themselves in there um, as missiles to clean players out and then trying to affect the bind. So a bind must proceed or be simultaneous with the contact. So they must get in there and bind on, whether that's opp the opposition or their own player, uh, and, then, and then drive. So the focus is on is really binding and driving. Uh, they must either join a ruck or retire behind an offside line. So if they're not part, if they're in front of an offside line and they're not part of the ruck and bound properly, then they must retire behind that line. They can't just hang along, hang alongside the ruck. Um, and if they have been previously part of a ruck and then they're no longer part of it, they're rolled away or got out of it, 
um, they can rejoin, but they've got to go back around and come in from behind that offside line again. Sanction for any of those is a penalty. As a winning position at the ruck time, uh, so rucking or put, so this is where the definition of rucking, so that's legally safely using your feet, so only your feet can be used, um, or by pushing the opposition team off the ball. Uh, so no hands can be used in a ruck unless that was from a player, so that's that jackler. Uh, if they were able to get their hands on the ball before the ruck formed and, st and were in a strong position to stay on their feet. So if they got their hands there and they had rights to the ball, uh, then they may continue to um, try and win that position. Okay. The jackler goes in and tries to get the ball, and if they miss it, let's say they just don't get it or they miss lifting it up and it was because of no fault of any player, any other player on the ground or the, or the ball carrier, uh, then they've had their crack. That's it. They can't continue to then go back in again. Um, so they, yeah, they can't, that, that comes back to that, uh, that resetting. They can't then reset and go again. So once they've had their, had their turn, if they, if they miss it or if they then lose their feet or um, they do get cleaned out in time, even though they might have got a fingertip there, then that's just that. Then the ruck's formed, it's hands off after that. But if they if they remain in a strong position over the ball and got their, and remain with their hands there on the ball, then they should be really rewarded for that. So players, uh, they must do everything in their power to remain on their feet throughout a ruck. Um, and that's where, uh, again, clean, with clearing players out, quite often you see um, now players try and come in and then roll, uh, roll players over. So they'll come in, grab, grab someone in the ruck, and then try and pull them down to the ground or roll them over. Um, again, this is we, uh, what, we're, what we're anticipating and what we're um, interpreting is, our, is with our law application guidelines is that they're trying to move away from a lot of that. Again, collapsing the ruck or pulling players down in the ruck. Um, and actually the focus shifting towards binding and driving players off the ball in order to win possession. So this is yeah this is where we we're heading. Um, again, a good good example here. The so ball down, uh, marginal entry from the uh, green player, but sure. Um, but blue player beautifully come through. He's come in strong position. Has bound with the green player and pushed and driven. So that is a, a, a good way to win position good by counter winding right. and driving. And then counter right good good. Finn Russell. Excellent work by one of the smallest players on the Scottish side. Scotland back in possession. Oh, just just to their own just, uh, the glitch I'm not going to try and deal with right now. Again. Counter rock is good. So I'll just show that again for those who missed it. So ruck formed, red player's in contact with blue player, red player drives forward with a good bind. And by driving forward, the ball has then ended up back on the red side. Yeah, binding and driving. Rather than just throwing players or out of the ruck or trying to collapse the players who are legally on their feet in the ruck. Any sanction around there is a penalty as well. So during a ruck, um, so all players in a ruck must be either caught in or bound to it, uh, so not just alongside. This is this law is particularly in here for players who just feel like they want to hang hang on uh, as kind of wingmen on the sides with uh, with a few fingertips uh, and think they're bound to a ruck. They're not. They must be properly bound to it, um, not just hanging out alongside the ruck. So if they're not, if they're hanging out alongside the ruck, they've got to be behind the offside line to hang to. And that's for either side as well. Uh, you can play the ball with your feet. Uh, again, provide it's in a safe manner. Uh, and players on the ground, they must attempt to move away from the ball. Um, they can't play the ball uh, in the ruck or as it emerges. So players on the ground are out of the game. They must do everything in their power to try and uh, allow other players who are on their feet to play or allow that ball to come back and be available to whoever legally wins it. Again, that's the rolling away part. Sometimes it's impractical to roll away, particularly if you're pinned, but you need to make an effort to move away or, or get up. Forbidden ruck actions. So all of these are penalties unless stated. So players can't pick the ball up with their legs. Uh, 
a lot. This is the one that really sort of backs up uh, that, that clearing out bit. Um, so they can't intentionally collapse a ruck or jump on top of it. So intentionally collapsing, if you're grabbing a player and intentionally pulling them down to the ground, uh, again, you're not trying to keep your feet and you are intentionally trying to collapse it. So again, binding and driving is the, is the message in World Rugby. Um, intentionally step on another player, it's just straight out dangerous. Um, you can't fall over the ball as it's just coming out of a ruck. So if a ruck's just a, the ball's just emerging um, or is about to emerge, you can't fall over the ball, uh, which is in effect killing it. You're leave, leaving your feet anyway. Um, and you can't kick or attempt to kick the ball out of a ruck. This is different to playing the ball with your feet. You can play the ball with your feet as you would in a scrum. You can uh, hook it backwards and, and play the ball backwards with your feet. But if you are making a kicking attempt or actually kicking the ball in, in order to get it out of a ruck, then that's an illegal act. And that, that's come about from players um, just booting the ball uh, straight through a ruck in the past. Um, if ball comes out of a ruck, you can't actually return it back into a ruck, whether either by your feet or and that could be anyone. It could be a ruck participant, it could be the halfback, anyone like that. You can't actually put it back in there. Same as the scrum time as well. Um, it's a free kick if you do that. Uh, and you can't, uh, so this is a particularly a halfback one, um, can't make the opponents believe that the ruck's ended when it's not. So they can't pretend to run away with the ball uh, to, make, to try and dummy the um, opponents into that when they actually don't have the ball and the ball might still be in the ruck, then that's actually a free kick. It's unfair play. So to end a ruck, um, so when the ball's been clearly won um, and it's available to be played, the referee should call use it. Uh, and then the team has five seconds to use it. If they don't, it's the scrum to the opposition. Uh, and the ruck actually ends when the ball leaves the ruck um, or when the ball in the ruck is on or over the goal line. So the second that that ball gets to a goal line and the ruck's over, which means that anyone can then or not anyone, uh, any player on their feet can then go and put their hand on the ball to either ground it uh, for, a touch, for a touchdown or for a try. Um, or when the ball becomes unplayable. Uh, so again, this is like the at tackle time. If something happens and the ball doesn't become uh, released or become playable, um, it could be through no fault of some people, um, or it could be, but the referee hasn't been able to determine it, then the scrum's awarded and again, uh, that sanction, uh, the uh, the scrum was awarded in a similar manner to before, whereby it's the team moving forward. Uh, if no team was moving forward, then it's the attacking team. So, um, particularly with that unplayable one, I think I've, this is, I've got enough of the I'll describe what's happening here. So, if you can see my little thumbnail down the bottom there with the video, uh, so tackle's been affected. There was just some pick and goes by Wales. Uh, they've gone in and then they've piled a couple of Wales guys over the top um, to try and protect the ball. Uh, there was no real Aussie player there trying to get the ball either. The ruck's already formed. Uh, they're in contact over the ball. The red guy's pinned um, and ball's not coming out. So the, uh, the red players actually pinned their own, got their own man pinned over the ball. It can't roll away as a mess of bodies. That's a clear unplayable uh, with red going forward. So it remains a scrum to red. Play back to Gareth Davis. Ball trap so tackle creeping up the AC wants the ball. Yeah. ball trap. Oh. Right, and uh, just to just to wrap up here, so uh, the latest uh, string of New Zealand rugby game priorities um, when relating to the breakdown itself. So a lot of these are reiterations of what we've just talked about. Uh, however, um, oh, ignore the fact that it says Law 19 at the bottom. Sorry. Um, so we've got the breakdowns, so tacklers must exit east-west immediately and not interfere with the ball. So that's going towards the touch lines and not north-south towards the goal lines. Uh, so that's where we want them to go so that they're not coming in through the zone where players are entering or where the balls might be played back. Uh, looking for um, immediate release by the ball carrier. So placing, passing, pushing. So all players are remaining on their feet and into the through the tackle gate again the gate referred to. Uh, so furthest extremities will the players involved in the tackle. Uh, so again the emphasis on supporting your body weight. So uh, hands, uh, hands or legs on the ground. Or, um, however, in saying that, um, players can brace onto a player on the ground. 
So if, they, if they're coming and embracing onto a player on the ground, they still need to be in a position that's supporting their weight. They can use a player, they can use their own uh, player on the ground to, to brace, but not, uh, not so much that they are just completely leaning on them. And, and if you took that player away, they would completely fall over. Uh, but they can use it as a, as a brace position. And don't forget, once they do that, though, once they come in and bind and brace onto a player on the ground, uh, they're, they're in effect. Um, so if they're an arriving opposition player, uh, defending, um, trying to come in for the ball, then that's the action that they're taking, and then they're not getting their hands immediately on the ball. Um, once that ruck's formed, they can't play it with their hands. So cleaning out players and tackling players who are not part of the ruck, that's a bit of a blight on the game lately. Um, so if there are players nearby who uh, haven't formed that ruck or who aren't a part of it, so they might be hanging out behind the um, behind the ruck or just off to the side of it on their on their you know behind their offside line. Um, so think about a radius, a one meter radius out around the ball. If the player hasn't come ready, come inside that radius, uh, and they really haven't they clearly haven't bound on. They're not part of a ruck. Um, and by taking them out or cleaning or cleaning out those players uh, is obstruction. Um, so it's penalizable as an obstruction law. Uh, and then half, and this is always the one that you that referees get prior to probably you know four out of five games uh, from a halfback. Um, so halfbacks are not to be uh, not this part at least. Uh, it's halfbacks are not to be challenged at rucks and walls until the this balls that are clearing from bodies. But the ball is out when it's clear of bodies. It's not hands on. Uh, it's not you know just starting to move the ball um, from the ground. There's there's an all clarification that says when the ball's lifted uh, in NZR has said right our our interpretation of when the ball's out is when it is clear of bodies so that and for me as a referee uh, i look at that i apply that to um to ruck time mall and um scrum so once it's actually clear of those legs or clear of those feet or clear of the the body that um that has been tangled up and or, or, or bound into um once it's pulled clear of that then ball's clearly out so that's the uh that's the interpretation to be, to be followed there. Cool. All right, um, that's all we have on there for now, guys. Uh, is there, if there are any questions, now is a good time to either ask them through. I can't see any in the chat, so probably means I was relatively thorough, but now is a good chance to have a have a chat if, uh, if we need to. Yeah, um, I've got a quick question about the um, clearing a player out. Yeah. So in the, um, in the slide with the tackle gate, yeah, that that player is he um, eligible to be cleared out? Let me just go back to the tackle gate one. Are you referring to that one there? Yeah. So the red player that I yep, think has just made the tackle is he? Yep. Are you allowed to attack him? So player on the ground. Um, so that that player has no. Um, as no part of the game, their they yeah, their only option right now is to get out of there. Uh, they need to come back out and around. So they they are not uh, they shouldn't be tackled by anyone. Um, again, if it happens, um, they, they can be if, if they're lying on or over the ball, then uh, you would often see players you know come in from blue and then you know shift them out and lift them out of the way. Um, if it's done safely uh and then that action is you know makes the ball available um a referee is probably going to play on from that because they didn't get out quick enough but then the blue guys have got them out of there and then the ball's available and then it's got out again safety is mm -hmm. a key thing um if but if they're off to the side so if let's if you're actually looking at that player there they're not yeah. in any way impacting the blue's ability to get the ball so if okay. a blue player came in there and attacked that player on the ground um that's da that's dangerous play you can't you can't tackle players on the ground Okay. If that makes if that makes sense. Yep. Thank you. Oh, anything uh, uh Perry, did that cover off a couple of things, particularly from the um I know you had a couple of questions around that rolling and that, that extra movement at at tackle time. That sort of covered. Yeah, yeah. Yep, sweet as. Yeah, happy as. Um those weird yeah been coaching our boys or were coaching our boys a couple of those good habits around rolling away yeah um how to attack the ruck and stuff as well so yeah yeah 
Yeah, exactly. I, I, I really, I, I've been pretty keen. Obviously, we, you know, didn't really, didn't really manage to get, sink our teeth into much footy this year yet, but um, particularly keen to see how um, uh, how we're going to work with, you know, clearing players out, and, and that's the action of you know, whether you we're blinding and driving or whether we're just grabbing them and and rolling them down to the ground or off to the side. And um, yeah, it's going to be a bit of a an interesting one and see how that how that's applied. But obviously, it'll be something that we work with. Your know, referees uh, and, the, and teams together. Yeah, our, our main point is uh, just the where they make contact. So yep. ideally, underneath the shoulder of yeah. the opposition player to clean them out, and obviously grabbing a couple of levers to help with yep. cleaning out. Yeah, yeah so. exactly. Right, rather than the over the top and which can potentially get around the head and neck area and then rolling them over can be yeah, quite a bit of a lottery yeah. sometimes. It's, uh, as to where they land as well and, and what part of their body they grab. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. right. Trying to get away from some of those old habits. <laughs> yeah. yeah, cool. Mm. Awesome. Right. Uh, Ants and Brando, anything from you guys? No, mate, you did a good job. Everything was clear. Um, well explained. Good pictures, good videos. Oh. Um, mm. Probably just for me, it's, it's clarity around that tackle assistant tackler. Yeah, because often that's when um, the questions get asked from spectators, players, coaches. Mm. I mean, we are in a position um, close to that breakdown, and our our position as a referee kind of does have a, a big effect on on that next decision you make. So, um, mm. yeah, it's important that you make that decision as you see it, basically. So, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I suppose for us as well, like with that tackle. Um, I, I'm used to calling it a choke tackle, which is uh, the tackle where you're trying to hold the uh, attacking player up. Mm-hmm. So, um, but just that point of contact. So obviously we're trying to teach our guys to hit chest at yeah. that nipple line and then grab onto the their elbows and grab the back of their jersey. Just how referees see that. Um, so we're, we're, um, we're actually making physically making a tackle itself before the tackle goes to ground. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. So, so we're trying to create them all by obviously holding them up. All oh, right. Yeah. But um, yeah. I mean, we. I'm used to calling it a choke tackle. I don't know what they call it up here, whether it's a holding yeah. up or. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, it, it's it, you know, it's all it's all well and good to go and do that, and it's fine. And then if you, because then if you hold them up and you, you know, and you and you get that more going, um, then you probably achieve what you want to achieve. Um, yeah. I guess the 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 danger of it is probably if you then go to ground, um, are you going to be then wrapped up and caught up on the wrong side and then they're not able to, you know, as a tackler, not able to roll away and get clear of the ball. Uh, so I guess where, however you land, you've got to be really mindful of that if it does go to ground um, yep. and become a tackle. Um, mm. Yeah, that's all we're to really look at in terms of referee. So it's a, you know, it's a, not a risky play, but particularly if you're performing it and coaching it in the right way. But certainly you've got to know, you've got to get out of there if, if the tackle is affected and you've got to make that ball available. You can't yeah. keep holding him up or holding him onto them on the ground. It's got to be hands off and get out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's cool. Cool. All right, guys. If there's uh, nothing else, um, appreciate the uh, the input in the chat there as well, and um, hopefully that's been uh, relatively clear. But I uh, will we'll get that chucked up online as well. 